Welcome to the Cosmic Keys Podcast. This is your episode for the week of January 21st, 2019 to January 27th, 2019. On today's episode, we're going to be interviewing Ryan Peverly, who is the host of the podcast A Culture. Um, and if you would like to skip forward through our forecasting section, make sure you check the show notes for the timestamps. Okay, so let's jump right into the forecast section. And I'm going to start with a tarot card of the week. So I'm just going to give my cards a quick shuffle there and we're going to pull a card and then we'll get into the astrology. Um, so last week, I believe we had the nine of wands, right? Yes. So it'll be kind of neat to see what we're getting this week because the nine of wands, if you did listen to last week, um, he's a bit banged up in that image. So um, maybe we will get something um, interesting. So let me cut the deck a couple times. Yeah, looking back on this past week, I think I maintained the nine of wands <laughs> perspective and it, I think it did serve me. I mean, I always feel a little banged up in this life, but... <laughs> When you, you see that look of determination on his face, that can that can get you through the week. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So are you ready? Yeah, see let's see it. Okay, so card of the week. <coughs> oh, no, this is good. I'm excited about it. So we got the death card. Um, so another major card. And this one card, lucky number 13. So um, the death card is a really fascinating Image. It shows kind of this skeleton Grim Reaper type riding a horse. And as he's moving along, the people are dying. <laughs> so you see a variety of figures. You see a bishop, um, a young woman, a child, and a king, um, signifying that we're kind of those types of people, all types of people are all equal when it comes to death. But don't be worried. This card does not mean literal death. What it is about is transformation. And one of the things you want to think about when you get the death card is what do you need to cut out of your life? Sometimes death is shown in this more kind of, you know, four horsemen style. Sometimes he's shown as like a grim reaper with um, a scythe. But the idea being you need to reevaluate your life and you need to cut something out of it because it's probably not serving you. And that can be a tough thing to do sometimes. Um, sometimes it can be, you know, a relationship that's not working that you've been avoiding bringing to an end. The death card shows up and says, you know, you're not going to move forward as a person until you get that done. Or maybe it's a dead end job that you need to move on from. Um, so this week, um, I would say start thinking about what is that dead weight in your life right now and let's remove it um let's move on and one of the great things about this card too there is a rising sun in the background so there is the sense here that this is a new dawn so even though the card looks a bit morbid especially for those who aren't as familiar with tarot i actually get excited when i get the death card it's kind of like spring cleaning for your life in a way absolutely so this is interesting. Usually I start with the forecast and then we draw a tarot card. But now knowing that the death card is our card of the week, I'm going to try to keep that in mind when looking at the week ahead. So this is a very big week. Um, on the night of Sunday, January 20th, depending on what time zone you're in, it'll either be Sunday night or Monday morning. But at 12.16 a.m. on Monday, we have our lunar eclipse which if you watch the news it's the blood moon the the wolf <laughs> the wolf blood moon and all that and that is kind of a legit way to describe what's going on but from the point of view of astrology we're thinking of it more in terms of where it's happening what sign it's in and what has led up to it so this this lunar eclipse that's going to happen right around midnight ish on um, Sunday night, Monday morning. This is going to be the final Leo eclipse that we've had in the series. So if you think back to the past two winters around this time of the year, which is Aquarius season, the past two winters have had Leo lunar eclipses. So there was one in 2017 around this time of the year, 
one in 2018, and now one in 2019. And so whatever that was doing for you in the past two winters, this is the final final show. This is like the encore because we're moving out of the Leo Aquarius axis and into the Capricorn Cancer axis. So this is going to be sort of like the final spotlight on whatever that means for you. So check what Leo is in your chart. And this is going to be happening really close to the borderline between Cancer and Leo, which is like a strong part of the Zodiac as is. So, um, Think of it in terms of this is also ending the eclipse season that we started on January 5th with the Capricorn solar eclipse. So we eclipse season is always a two week period between a solar eclipse and a lunar eclipse. And so in a way that can be referencing the death card because it's like the death of eclipse season. Now we're putting this behind us and stepping into whatever this means for you. And one aspect that's really going to color this is a difficult aspect. Um, Mars and Aries is going to be making a square to Saturn and Capricorn. So if you think of Mars as the planet of action and ambition, and you think of Saturn as the planet of uh, restriction and compression in a way, this can really feel like you're pumping the brakes, like you're trying to move forward, but you're being stopped and, and it can be frustrating and it can really bring out your temper in a way. So this is going to be coloring this eclipse for you. Like, yeah, it's the final spotlight on this Leo stuff that's going on. But Mars and Saturn are at a square 90 degree aspect to each other. So if you find yourself on Monday like in this new like magical eclipse state of mind but there's all of these things in your life that are like pumping the brakes pumping the brakes i would say just know that that's normal um when i look ahead at this entire week there's a lot of good blending with difficulties so that's monday um and i would recommend just even on youtube there's tons of videos that go into depth about what the the solar and lunar eclipses mean so beyond the span of this forecast you could totally do a little bit of research but moving on to tuesday we have a really positive aspect on tuesday which is between the two benefic planets the two good fortunate planets um those being venus and jupiter and they're making a conjunction in the sign of sagittarius which is jupiter's home sign when these two planets come together in a conjunction, there's a blending of energies. So really, it, I've heard the metaphor of Venus moving through this, the sign of Sagittarius to meet Jupiter and give him a kiss on the cheek or something. That's, stole, that's a stolen metaphor from somebody I heard el- elsewhere. But this is like with all this difficult stuff happening in 2019, this is like a super positive highlight. So if you could just begin a new project on Tuesday and this is happening at 7:26 a.m. Tuesday morning Eastern time like the vibes are just going to be positive in general because the two benefics are Venus and Jupiter and these planets are supportive planets that are harmonious and really things that that make you think in positive terms so so if you need to schedule a meeting with your boss, Tuesday morning is a good time to do it. Yeah, and, and there it's going to be colored by the Sagittarian energy, too. So Sagittarius is a fire sign. It's expansive, and you it makes you want to learn more. It makes you want to research and shoot for the stars, sort of like when you picture the centaur with the bow and arrow. So it makes you want to learn more and expand outward. So This is going to happen also at the very end of the year when Venus makes a loop around the Zodiac. So like when you think about all the difficulties of this year, Tuesday, when this positive aspect happens, like really, really zone in on that. And moving on to Wednesday, um, Wednesday for all intents and purposes could be like a Mercury retrograde day, even though Mercury is in retrograde because Mercury is going to be squaring Uranus. And Uranus has a tendency to feel like Mercury retrograde-ish because it's very unexpected and sort of chaotic. And when he's aspecting Mercury, just, you know, be, be, expect, expect disruptions, expect 
the unexpected on this day. And as I look further into the week, we have yet another positive aspect um, as Mars on Friday makes a trine to Jupiter. So this is another combination of two fiery elements, Mars in the, the cardinal fire sign of Aries, trining Jupiter, which is in the mutable fire sign of Sagittarius. Um, Jupiter just makes everything bigger, everything that it interacts with expand. So when Mars is viewed as your ambition and your willpower and your desire, when Jupiter trines Mars, it, that desire and that ambition just grows bigger and wider. So if you need a lot of juice to do something, to accomplish something, if you need the willpower and determination, schedule it to be on Friday because Mars trining Jupiter will give you that energy and give you that ambition. So those are basically all of the major aspects that I want to highlight this week. And when you think about it in terms of the death card, well, okay, the biggest thing that I think of is it's the, the death of the Leo eclipse cycle and the death of eclipse season. So when you look at the rising sun on that card, you really think, okay, this week is a new week. This is like a new period to think of all the like ripe opportunities you have. So don't think of it like death as in the dying skull man coming to get you. Think of it like this, the rising sun coming over the hillside of that card. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, I'm excited to see what happens for me next week because it sounds like a lot of really interesting things are going on. Totally. Well, guys, that concludes our forecasting section. Stay tuned for our interview with Ryan Peverly of A Culture. Today we are interviewing Ryan Peverly of the A Culture Podcast. Ryan has been the host of the A Culture Podcast for how long, Ryan? Uh, it started in that's great questions uh, September 2016, so a little over two years now. Nice. Well, you're a podcasting veteran compared to us. We're on our what, like third or fourth episode, so <laughs> it's great to be able to talk to to you, and and so great to have a fellow podcaster on. Absolutely. Yeah. I always love talking to other people who podcast. It's it's usually a pretty interesting chat. Well, it's interesting because like Scarlett and I met um, via a, a, a different podcast and just like social media. And right when I met her, she sort of introduced me to your podcast when she was a guest. And that was when I was sort of in the early stages of listening to this material via podcast so like it aligns with us two meeting and me discovering your show because I really listen to podcasts all the time so I've pretty much been following your stuff since I think it was like spring of 2017 ish so <laughs> some of our questions are like specific because both of us are fans of your show and we sort of have heard a little bit of your your story yourself so for the um, listeners who are listening to our podcast, Ryan, could you describe your podcast called A Culture and what kind of topics you go over? <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty interesting question because on the surface, it is about one thing. It's about, you know, sort of occult philosophy and occult sciences and magic and Gnosticism and just, you know, any sort of hidden belief system that's just in the nooks and crannies of culture out there. But on the flip side of that, if you dig deeper into it, it's really just about the human experience and experience with the material and with the ideas. Uh, that's not something I like to talk about a lot. It's something I found I have to be more open about, though, as I move forward with it, because a lot of people uh, criticize me for not going into the practice side of things. I do not practice any of this stuff. I do not practice magic. I do not practice witchcraft or anything like that. But uh, I do have an intellectual curiosity about it, more about you know what, what it means for me to be interested in this, 
what it means for other people to be interested in this. How did you get interested in it? Because I found that, you know, I got interested uh, in this stuff in a really sort of dark period of my personal life. And these doors sort of opened to me. And at first I was very welcoming to it and very, uh, you know, open to the ideas. And the more I got into it, the more I had to sort of be a little with it, obviously, uh, because I just have to, I guess I've learned myself enough that I have sort of this addictive intellectual personality where I will get into ideas and I will let them consume me. So I have to step back from this stuff sometimes because I'm sure you guys know. I mean, if you, if you look at it in the wrong way, it can get pretty dark and pretty scary pretty quickly. So that's the podcast in a nutshell. That's, that's my, it's really about the human experience with it. It's less about the subjects. The more I get into it, it's more about, you know, how you interact with it personally, how I interact with it, and then how that sort of has shaped my, my story here. Yeah, that's really interesting because a common recurring theme is that people stumble upon this stuff or get drawn into it during a period of crisis. Like, I can relate to that. We've had another astrologer guest who basically said the same thing. And like, we talk about stuff through the lens of astrology and tarot a lot. A lot. And anything that is a cult and anything that has to do with the the mysterious aspect of things that you, you're really like a detective and you really are so curious that you're just searching through it. That's really kind of like a Scorpio thing. And we, you gave me your birth chart and I find it really interesting that your Pluto, you were born in the early 80s right when Pluto moved into Scorpio. Um, and that's sort of the generational marker for the millennial generation. And we're mm -hmm. sort of exploring on the show how people that have that placement between like 83, 84 and 95 are sort of this demographic of people that are now interested in the occult. So it's interesting for you that you, your birth chart was like right when that shift happened and I was going to ask you because a lot of the the music on your show <clears throat> sounds very like 80s and 90s like what's your relationship with that sort of retro like nostalgia that relates to all these subjects Well that goes back to I guess the way that I approach the show from a sorry my cat's crying there that it goes back to the way uh you did reference my birth chart I was born in November 83 uh, I believe it's 0 degrees Pluto in Scorpio is what my chart says. So right on that cusp. Um, but I've noticed that the the music, it, well, one, it's it's great that you referenced that because it is a big part of the show. Uh, I should probably back up and tell you that when I originally conceived the idea of doing a podcast like this, it was more about being a parody of other shows like it with a sort of like a tongue-in-cheek approach to it. Uh, and the music is... A, <laughs> The theme music that's been there since day one is a straight ripoff of Coast to Coast AM. It's a remix of it by a guy I know. Uh, so that was intentional. And it, and it was, again, my own personal experience with the material. I grew up listening to that radio show late at night on my AM FM radio in my bedroom. You know, it's the first sort of like paranormal introduction that I got was, was through that, that talk show. So parody slash homage, I guess, in, in some way for the show. Uh, but I... And, I, you know, I lost track of your question. Could you rephrase that? Oh, the music. Sorry. Yeah. So my relationship with it is I am like, I guess obviously nostalgia is really big in culture these days. We all love things from our past. Um, I think that's kind of dangerous on some level because you get sort of stuck in it. But I think, but in more of an alchemical way, it's sort of like taking that and then sort of, you know, combining it with your interest in the present to I guess become more of a complete version of yourself so acknowledging like that that's where this started for me at least subconsciously because I, I don't retain an interest in the paranormal my entire life or the occult but you know to just recognize that like I was born at that time when Pluto moved into Scorpio that culture was huge in the 80s that dance retro culture and to, so, to sort of like frame the show aesthetically like that just seemed to me to make the most sense and it also gives the show I think a good vibe when you start it you know if you start with a nice upbeat sort of dance track i just think that that sets the tone for the conversation that follows and sets the tone for the entire you know podcast as well just in general because my personality is very 
I don't know, I'm pretty laid back. I don't take this stuff too seriously. I, I like talking about it, but I, you know, like again, I don't practice or anything. So it's more just like setting the table with something that I think it makes it uh, makes it accessible to the average listener. Yeah, it definitely makes it fun having that music, and it is great too when you think about how many different types of podcasts there are out there and how that's a growing field among podcasts. I feel like more and more people are slowly starting to create podcasts like about the occult, about tarot or astrology. Um, So it's been interesting to kind of follow that community where before it was, you know, there wasn't much out there that you could really listen to. Um, But now, you know, you have programs like yourself that are more kind of fun, upbeat, you know, friends to the skeptics. (laughs) And then you also have some podcasts out there that go really deep hardcore into how to perform rituals and things like that and then you have us and we're kind of in between like we laugh at this stuff sometimes and then other times we take it seriously so it's nice to see that spectrum among people that are discussing these kinds of topics in the community yeah i i would agree and i mean there's like even in the couple years i've been doing this you know there are people that i've interviewed that were just blog we wrote a book or two about this stuff and then I see they've started their podcast. I, I guess you're a great example of that, Scarlett, you know, where you were blogging for so long and I'm suddenly like, you know what? The, the medium's hot. The people love the content. They love the sorts of interaction you can get with the, you know, just hearing people talk. I've kind of looked at podcasts as kind of like a return to the the oral tradition of storytelling and how you used to pass information along long before we were, you know, here. But and I think that's great. You know, I think it's great that, that it's a growing medium and that people are finding their voice, so to speak, through it. And I just think it's, you know, it's, it's also the evolution of technology uh, where nobody wants to read anymore. You know, no offense to any bloggers out there, but it's, it's sort of that next step from blogging, you know, to like what's what's blogging in, in 2019? Well, essentially. Yeah, I always find it so humorous that sometimes I'll be listening to a, a podcast and they'll be talking about these ancient grimoires and I'll have, you know, the podcast on and at the same time I'm like doing dishes and vacuuming. <laughs> like it's such a funny dichotomy of, you know, people when they listen to podcasts, they're just going about their daily lives. Yeah, that's that's a great point. I mean, you you can take it anywhere. So, I I was just doing dishes as well before I got on the and what, what was I doing? Listen to a podcast. So, yeah. <laughs> So Ryan, you you uh, opened your show with saying from the kingdom of Ohio, and we're Chicago based, so we kind of wanted to explore like the Midwestern culture that we both sort of share. Like a lot of people from Ohio live in Chicago, and I feel like Chicago is a city where all the Midwestern states sort of blend together, and mm-hmm. I think that can be a good thing. Like people. Are like oh everyone there is so nice and friendly and that's sort of that midwestern charm but like the thing i was going to ask you about is ohio has like a spooky like lore in itself like wh- are you familiar with the things they say about like wright patterson air force base and stuff like that <laughs> dude i live half an hour from wright pat so <laughs> my grandfather my grandfather was a contractor there for many years as an, uh, with an engineering firm that he worked for over in Dayton. I work in Dayton every day. That, that's my day job, Monday through Friday. So I'm very familiar with the lore of Wright Pat and what they say has taken place there or what still may be there. Uh, it's fascinating stuff. I don't personally get into the alien UFO lore anymore. Like there was a time where I was like, oh shit, like that is you know that's super interesting to me, and I I did a lot of research, and I was I had conversations with my grandfather about this stuff, and he would tell me things that he had experienced there. So very familiar with the lore of Wright Pat, and uh, but Ohio in general, I mean, I know I know a lot of the sort of paranormal and occult lore of Ohio. Uh, I th- think it varies from place to place. You know, there's not really much besides like what you're talking about with Wright Pat, which isn't really occult at all, but. Um, not in, not much in this area where I live, but uh, I think the further the further e- the further east you go, there you know there's a lot of there's a lot of interesting things. The Serpent Mound, for example, is like an hour from my house, so I haven't been there in a while. But you know that that's one of those uh, you know sort of ancient sites that people sort of geek out about, and I've had some pretty intense experiences there myself. But um, 
And, but in terms of what you said about the kingdom of Ohio, don't ask where it came from. I have no idea. Uh, well, I do have an idea. I, just, I don't really want to share it, but it's because it's kind of it's kind of just it, well, actually, it just goes back to the uh, the parody component of what I was talking about with the coast to coast AM. And I used to listen to Art Bell, and, and he had like a he'd come back from commercial, and he would have this voiceover from time to time, and it would say from the kingdom of Nye. And oh yeah, N- Nye was like the <laughs> county. Yeah. So I thought, oh shit, like I live in the kingdom of Ohio then, and there's also a, a a novel that came out maybe 10 years ago with that same title, which I have on my bookshelf, but I've never read it. You know, you buy books, you never read. So I just, I was just like looking for a, a cool way to start the show. And I, I like the Hey Yo that I do. And it just so happened that the kingdom of Ohio rhymed with it. So I thought that was kind of a, a cool way to, to usher in each episode. I never put the kingdom of Nye with the kingdom of Ohio together because I don't know if you're familiar, but there's this app called the Paranormal Radio app that play that syndicates like a ton of different talk shows, and they have like four or five channels that are just like Art Bell twenty four seven. So like after like I liked your theme song before I technically knew it was from Coast to Coast back then, but now that I have this Paranormal Radio app, I'm like soaking up all of that stuff from the '90s and like early 2000s that was Art Bell's legacy and it's like I can definitely see especially with the theme song and now the the lingos and everything how that had an impact on the, your style of podcasting yeah and I think I mean without that legacy of Art Bell and that radio show I, I don't think this genre of podcasting is what it is I I think all of the the big names obviously like when, I mean I don't know you know, like Jimmy Church or, you know, guys like that, like they they broadcasted on there before on Coast to Coast as guest hosts. So, you know, and they're sort of like the most popular name. But, yeah, I don't think that the paranormal field is what it is without that show, obviously, without Art's contribution to it. And and but really, I don't you know, I don't really care much about his contribution to the to the, the field or the genre. It, it It goes back to more about the influence that that had over me personally and it's just me acknowledging that. And a lot of people love it. Some people don't like it. Uh, mostly YouTube commenters, which if you guys post these on YouTube, then you'll, but, uh, it's just, you know, some people think it's, it's lazy of me to do that. And, but I just, I don't give a shit, you know, like I'm going to do me. I'm going to, I'm going to do the show the way I want to do it, obviously. And, and low key, it's, you know, sort of, and we can we, we can get into this if you like, but there's a whole other sort of like fictional storytelling component to what I do because my background's in creative writing, so I very much approach the show uh, from a you know storytelling component. You know, I, I I look at each episode as you know its its own thing, but I also look at the podcast as a whole from the beginning to now as you know one sort of complete story, uh, and that's why I don't care about you know ripping off music and stuff because it it, it there's a whole thing going on there than what most people pick up on. Yeah, definitely. You mentioned that with your podcast, you're kind of just covering these topics, but you don't necessarily participate in rituals or things like that yourself. Um, what is your kind of spiritual background or do you have one from your childhood? Um, was there any specific event or something like that that got you interested in these topics or the paranormal or... Would you define yourself as kind of an atheist or agnostic, or what are your thoughts on that? Well, in terms of my background, I was raised in a secular household. There was no religion shoved down my throat at all. I was not forced to go to church or do anything like that. Uh, and on the flip side, there was no you know, sort of alternative spirituality impressed upon me either. And I did not really interact with any sort of religious or spiritual beliefs or philosophies uh, in my youth. And I mean, I, I went to a couple youth groups at the local Lutheran church, but mostly because I had friends that went there and there was a cute girl that I wanted to hang out with, you know, so that was my, that was the extent of my, uh, you know, sort of spiritual slash religious experience as a kid. Um, but as I got older, you know, like obviously you always, well, you, I guess you don't always feel this way, but as you get older, you you know that there's just something sometimes from your life, and whether you want to call that spirituality or not, 
that's fine. I don't really consider what I'm going through to be more to be much of an experience, but uh, we can get into that some other time. But just to stay on your question here, um, what happened to me was I had a couple paranormal experiences as a kid. Uh, one of them I've talked about on the show several times. One I, I just probably will never talk about, really sort of uh, weird and way too personal. But um, so I had that sort of, I don't know what you would call it, but if you listen to the show, you know, I, I, I talk a lot about trauma and you know, this sort of psychological fragmentation and things like that. And there was something that happened in my childhood. I, I don't know what it was. I, I don't know if something was done to me, but I, I feel like I just had that uh, some sort of traumatic experience that opened up that door to me to have these experiences as a kid, you know. So um, as I got older, I continued to have them here and there. Uh, and But recently, I haven't really had any, which I think is why my my interest in this stuff remains only sort of surface level is because it's why I don't do the, you know, ritual component is because I, I don't really feel like I have, I'm tapped into that wavelength anymore. Like I was when I was younger, you know, and ultimately I think that might be a good thing because I, I feel healthier, you know, mentally and, and physically because of that. So I don't know. I, I'd be curious what you guys think. Because you, you do do the more, uh, I, well, I don't know if you guys do ritual magic but i like i know scarlet you're pretty much into tarot astrology and i think you do a little witchcraft here and there right still maybe i'm not sure i believe you've you've mentioned on your show that you used to be really into conspiracy theories and then you sort of reached a point where it made you feel so like um crazy and like you were ungrounded so you basically cut yourself off from that is that accurate yeah, that's accurate, and uh, that is something that I found just in my own life to be a dangerous about the world. Not that there's not any merit to some of the theories. Not that there's not any, you know, I call it fuckery going on. I don't, I don't, I don't know if I can swear on here. I'm sorry if I can't. You're good. <laughs> yeah, you're fine. It just seems okay. Cool. Right. So yeah, it just seems that that for me personally, and it. You know, it, it might if you there, if there's something in my chart about this, please tell me like why I am this way. But I I got consumed by that, and then so not only do I get consumed by the ideas where I'm exposing myself, you know, all the time, just in my spare time, but then I'm I I look out into the world and I see the world that way, and then I also see the people in my personal life that way, which is really what tripped me up with that sort of mindset. You know, n not to dismiss this stuff as fake news or whatever other buzzwords people are throwing out there these days about it. But it's, it's more just like, I know people do bad things. I've done bad things, you know, not to the geopolitical level, but I just can't really allow myself to slip into that mindset for my own sake, you know, for my own sanity, for my own mental health and just for the, my own quality of life. And so I, I've probably talked about it a bit too much on the show and I really try to steer people away from that. Not to say, you know, that, like I said, not to say there's nothing going on with it, like, but a lot of the things that you see in mainstream culture these days that you would call conspiracy, like, I don't really find much credence to it anyways, you know, like extraterrestrials. I don't really see a whole lot of things going on here that I could consider extraterrestrial. I just see a lot of propaganda mostly about it, you know, in, in film and television and so on. So that's why I'm like, it's dangerous to to think that you have no control over yourself and your actions, which is what appealed to me about the occult, uh, because I sort of transitioned from that conspiracy mindset into that more occulture mindset, where I found you know, things like magic and astrology and tarot and alchemy as subjects to be interesting, because it made me feel like I had more control over my own experience here. Uh, and I still feel that way. Like I still feel like there's components of these things that, that really empower the individual. But for me personally, there's a line that I can't cross because of just my own, you know, sort of history of, of thinking and, and behaving that I just have to, you know, it's kind of like when you find out, oh, I'm allergic to dairy, so I can't eat dairy anymore. It's kind of the same thing. You know, I just found out that I'm allergic to certain things here and I just have to stay away from them for my own benefit. Yeah, I can, I can relate to that a lot because I've, it's interesting, like, I sort of learned all the symbolism of occultism through conspiracy like back you know in the 
early 2000s when like I hate to admit it but like early Alex Jones was out there and I was like a teenager you know like experimenting with like smoking weed and so I was you know totally unhinged with that too and I get exactly what you're saying like you can get into that mindset where your worldview becomes like they're out to get you and if that is your worldview you sh- you should pitch that but it was interesting with me like there was sort of, sort of a bridge where I was like oh wait I know what that means I know what that means oh it's all in this big occult book oh yeah I already kind of am trained in it because I've been s- seeing these Illuminati symbols you know <laughs> but th- then it's like you sort of maybe the symbols were what intrigued me about conspiracy in the first place like I want to know what the Illuminati knows or whatever and then when you realize that it's like this long tradition it's something you can use in your own life you know yeah and it's funny because I'm more of the skeptic of the two of us of me and Dan when it comes to conspiracy theories Um, and he's probably more of the skeptic when it comes to like witchcraft and and kind of stuff like that maybe um and i think you're right too that just like with conspiracy theories with ritual magic you can go down like this dark hole where you start relating everything to it and it becomes your life in a really unhealthy way so it is good to have you know a bit of a distance from time to time and you don't want to necessarily jump like head first into you know performing rituals or spells or things like that and um like yourself i grew up in a a completely like secular household um and i i did kind of come into like things like witchcraft as a teen and i kind of went way too far (laughs) for a while and then i kind of pulled back to where i am Um, Well, there was a space in between where I kind of just stopped caring about all of it and just kind of put it out of my life and then waited until after college and started getting involved again with it. But you definitely need that like happy medium where you use it to enhance your life and and enhance your intellectual pursuits without it like taking over your life to a certain degree. And there's definitely a lot of occultists out there, I think, that go too far you know they really make it a whole part of their life and um at that point just like with conspiracy theories you start to you know instead of questioning with conspiracy theories like you do everything the government or the media says with the occult you're like questioning oh my god i'm not feeling good today i must have like conjured a demon or something like that that's following me around so you definitely need to find that happy medium with this kind of research and information I would agree 100% on that, and that's that's part of like recently what I what I try to impress on people in the show is that there are components of this that are beneficial that can help you grow and and heal from these traumas, but there are also components of it that only exacerbate that, and you have to be very discerning about which does which, and it's a, a different for everybody, you know. Like my threshold for it might be lower than than yours and just just something to keep in mind as you work through this stuff because i do attract a lot of people that are very interested in these subjects but i think they realize quickly that you know while i'm interested in them i'm also very very cautious and skeptical of you know what is the nature of this stuff you know like i talk i i one of the best interviews i did was about john d and his and 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 his work with with, uh, jason louv the more that I study D, which is the reason here, because that subject and his his work is kind of what really opened the door for me to start the show. But I think you can conjure up anything, but it's it's sort of like a neutral energy, and it kind of depends on you know what your mindset is and what your intention is going into those sorts of you know experiments or uh, I guess rituals. So yeah, I mean, I'm it's nice to hear that because this card I followed your work for a while now, obviously, and. And I thought for a, a while there that you were just this really hardcore, you know, pagan witchcraft, like I'm doing this shit all the time, you know, whatever. but the more I got to know you and like kind of follow you, I just, I think, I feel like you have found a good balance in your own life with that. So I have to commend you for that because you're right. There are a lot of people out there that do not find that balance in this kind of work. And I think that's sad because I think that there's a lot of great potential in people that are, are able to 
to access these things and use them for betterment, but they just get carried away with it. It's yeah. I, I'm looking at your chart, Ryan, and like when I'm uh, thinking about what you're saying, it seems that you have like the natural inclination inclination towards the mysteries and the occult and stuff. But if you have it like funneled through a podcast, like you get all of the adventure of experiencing that, but it's like from a safe, balanced place. And it's interesting that you, like, you get to share it with so many people, like people like me, because I've been listening to your show for a few years now. And it's like, you get to be the one asking the questions, you get to be um, the curious detective, but nothing's gonna follow you home. You just hit submit, send it out to the world and then it's like this shared experience but you don't have to necessarily like bring it into your everyday life yeah and that i mean that is a reason why i don't practice any of this is because one i don't really know the true nature of what i'm dealing with and while at some point in my life that unknown component to it was pretty sexy you know like that's the scorpio in me that's that sort of occult detective in me that is always sort of, you know, chasing my own curiosity. But you kind of realize at some point too that, you know, like a cat or a dog, like you might just be chasing your own tail around in circles, you know, like after a while trying to feed your own curiosity. And, I, you know, so that's why I, I did take a step back from it. And I, I looked at it kind of in the way that you're talking about. Like I, I like to sort of be outside my comfort zone. So some of the conversations I have are – are beyond my comfort zone, even just in the environment that we're having them in, you know, just in terms of like, do I really, I get that this, 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 this girl believes what she's saying, but do, do I really feel like we're resonating here? Like that this is something that's, that's authentic in, in my life, you know, cause I don't believe in this stuff. I don't really have any beliefs that I would characterize in this field in terms of spirituality or whatever. I just sort of, I don't know. I, I, it just, there are things that just feel right to you, feel intuitively correct. And some of this stuff does and some of it doesn't. And I think that's this allows me to sort of wait and just take what makes sense to me from disparate worldviews and, and, and uh, uh, points of views and just sort of take that for myself and, and keep it, you know, sort of safely with me and not have to try to express that outwardly. Yeah, definitely. One of the things that I know is, is a challenge for, for me, and, and I was curious to see if it's a challenge for you, is, you know, having a podcast as you do, you're kind of out in the open, um, you know, and people are commenting, you know, on, you know, like on YouTube, like you mentioned. And how do you deal with kind of the fact that the majority of the population finds what you do and what I do very odd. <laughs> and do you tell people the truth when they ask about your podcast or, or do you kind of bend the truth? And and I've done both, you know, because I'm a pretty public figure out there in social media. So sometimes, you know, it, it's some days are tough, you know, when you get a lot of like crazy comments. And sometimes, you know, I have relatives that I still lie to about what I do and some I tell the truth. So it's always this kind of tough balance with this kind of topic um and it can be tough you know being out there like you are on on a podcast yeah it's pretty tough uh i've always had thick skin in general just because i have a background in uh, creative writing and like multimedia production and things like that so i'm used to like throwing out ideas and people telling me that they're not good so i think that sort of prepared me on some level for the constant barrage of, from social media when you're doing things like this. Um, to that point, though, I've actually been pretty fortunate in terms of the criticism. I don't get a lot of criticism from people, which is refreshing because, like I said, my show is not about practice or ritual or anything like that. So there's nothing that you can really argue about. I'm just presenting a personal narrative here, and either you identify with it or you don't. But in terms of, you know, do I tell people the truth about what I do? Yeah, I, I actually do. Um, I'm not ashamed of it. It doesn't bother me just to tell people that I host this podcast. It's called Occulture. Oh, what does that mean? Well, and then you explain, you know, what the occult is. And some people know what it is, maybe not to the point that they should, but they've heard the word. So you kind of have to break that down. And then what are the subjects that you talk about? And I've sort of, uh, because my day job's in marketing, I sort of refined my approach to how I deal with, you know, 
people that I know aren't really interested in it, but still want to know about what I do with it. Uh, so I have like a, like maybe a spiel of sorts. I, I, I kind of tell them, you know, it's kind of like alternative religious or spiritual philosophies, you know, some, some elements of, you know, conspiracy theory here and there and, and so on. And, but like mostly it's, it's really about art and psychology and the human experience and creativity and, and how these things all sort of merge to create this old culture, you know, cause that's a big part of it too. It's not just, it's not just like the, buy the book component of how you do a ritual or how you, you know, create a natal chart or how you can divine through tarot or runes or whatever else. It's more about like how manifest in culture through art and, and through creativity and through the individual psyche. So I I've kind of boiled it down into, into that sort of explanation and, I find that people are more receptive to that, like, because when you say, oh, it's about magic and astrology and, you know, all these other subjects, they sort of tend to back away from that, makes them uncomfortable, especially if they came from, uh, you know, like maybe more of a Christian or a Catholic background, which is odd because when you study the occult, it, it, it's steeped in Christian and Catholic mysticism. So I have no idea why it makes people uncomfortable. Beyond that, yeah, um, I'm, I'm not ashamed to tell people. In my family, there's a lot, there's a few people in my family who actually, uh, they listen to the show regularly. My mom uh, my dad, I think, doesn't as much any, but I have some cousins and some aunts and uncles who are are into what I do to support me personally. I don't know if they really care about the subjects, but they just support me personally. Uh, but there's another side of my family that that is is uh, I I I kind of have to, you know, be very careful about how I explain it to them because it it, it would sort of ruffle their religious feathers, so to speak. That's really interesting. Um, and Ryan, like. You were mentioning how the, all of this stuff for you relates to creativity and art and in your case, like creative writing, because you mentioned that you studied creative writing and everything. And in your chart, um, the third house is sort of like the communication house and you've got like a, a, a conjunction basically with Mars and Venus in there. So it sort of makes sense that like you're doing some kind of communicative work in your life um and it's funny because i i have an english degree and i've gone through creative writing phases and to me that's like a cult in itself because your imagination and when you're creating these characters they sort of have agency on their own and literally like it was a huge part of my life right after college but it kind of i kind of evolved out of it but I feel like the fundamental storytelling tools have stuck with me. So like, have you noticed that your creative writing background like translates well into podcasting? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it is sort of the uh, the foundational component of it is I, I treat it like it is a story. Like I mentioned that earlier. Um, and I think that there's, I mean, if, if you really if you took any sort of creative writing classes or literary classes in college or high school, uh, if you learned the basics of storytelling in, in, in that venue, uh, you would see that I incorporate elements of that into the podcast. So even though it is an audio, you know, sort of one-on-one -on -one interview approach, like it's just, I approach it artistically. Uh, I think the medium does lend itself to, you know, sonic experimentation. You know, I, I record all the episodes at certain frequencies to sort of, try to get the, the listener into a better mental state as they're listening to it. So yeah, th there is a, there is some, there is a lot of creativity that goes into what I do behind the scenes. And I think that's why it's, it's been, you know, so well received so far, but uh, yeah. And in terms of creative writing, man, like I still, I go in waves with it too. Like I don't, um, I don't write every day creatively because I do a lot of that for this as well. But uh, I, I have been recently sort of dipping my toe back into it, and you're right. Like it, it, it it's it's sort of it's sort of interesting. It's magic. It is magic if you look at magic as creating something out of nothing, which is also art. So I mean, I've talked about this before, and I'm sure you guys have have heard this too. But magic and art—that's the same kind of impulse, you know. Sort of sexual energy kind of blends in there with that too. Like I just think this all. It's a, it's a lot of disparate ways to describe essentially the same energetic phenomena. You know, magic, art, sex creativity is all sort of like in the same wheelhouse to me and that could be my scorpio nature you know trying to maybe combine all these things but i just don't like the older i get the more i it just feels like that's intuitively correct like yeah like let's try to funnel all this into this 
one thing and then create something from it. So that's what I'm doing or trying to do, I guess, with the show. Yeah, that's awesome. So for our last question, I wanted to ask where you see the occult community heading. Do you find that more and more people are getting interested in these kinds of topics? And um, that's something we've discussed a lot as kind of our generation specifically kind of being more drawn towards the occult in general and exploring these topics. And especially as we kind of we're almost moving out of like the new age movement and into something different. And I'm not sure what that is exactly. But I was wondering your thoughts on on if you see um, this growing as as a popular interest among people. Well, I don't think how you could say that it's not growing because if you just look at, you know, just examples of what sort of stuff is coming out through Hollywood uh, and you see a lot more, you know, like if you turn on your Netflix, you know, you got the new Sabrina show and things like that that are that are geared towards kids. And I don't know if that's a product of like which came first, like did the interest in it come first in the sort of the underground and then now the mainstream knows that people are are or is it more of like a way of thinking about it but is it more of like they want people to be interested in it so they're making stuff that's more accessible to get people interested in it so I don't know which way that goes regardless it is growing and I can see that in terms of you know my audience size that grows every week that people are more into these ideas based on metrics alone so and that's really all that I can speak to about it because I don't have a lot of interaction in my day to day life with people who are interested in these things. I mean, obviously, on social media, the people who follow me are into it, but you know, I try to spend as little time as I can on there, so I don't really have much. When I was trying that way uh, in the the early days of the show, that's kind that kind of turned me off because it made me it made me it made me realize that these people are still just people, like they still have the same sorts of concerns and problems that that people who aren't into this stuff have. So. Uh, and I don't want to go down too far. Uh, I don't want to go too far down that path. But just to sort of summarize your question, yeah, uh, it, it is growing. Uh, but I can only talk to that in terms of my my interaction with. I do see a lot of more a lot more people coming into the show because they are interested in the ideas. So I don't really have a great answer for that other than that. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Did you have any last uh, comments, Dan? I guess Ryan. <laughs> Is there anything like astrological that you're curious about before we close the show out? Yeah, tell me when you think the best time for me to, I guess, look at doing like a like a like a novel of sorts. Like I, I want to write a book. Is there a good time? You th- and that might be more of like not based on my chart. That actually might be more of like an, a, a reading. But what do you guys see coming up here in the next few months? Like. Would there be a good time to sit down and try to carve out a novel here? Okay, so like, because it's in uh, Sagittarius, like this year, 2019, you're having your Jupiter return in Sagittarius in your sixth house. So like, this is, according to astrology, going to be like a really lucky year for you, like just because Jupiter comes around every 12 years. So this is a once in every 12 years opportunity for you. And when it's in the sixth house, it means you can like really be regimented and set goals. So like as far as working on creative writing or or novels or anything, I think this year actually is a really good year to at least get started on the stuff and like focus more on the routine and like whether or not you meet the finish line within this one year span, you could definitely like get the wheels in motion with just like being really um, thorough and regimented with like going at it every day in that anal Virgo way. But like Jupiter being here in Sagittarius in 2018 is like a very lucky sign for you. So if I were to like guess, I would say you're going to have a good year and you could be really productive. Well, I'm glad to hear that, man, because I, I started writing a novel a couple weeks ago, like, on the new year just because I just I felt you like if you write creatively you just you get the itch from time to time and especially if like you don't do it like if it's not your job job then if it's just a hobby like you know you go in sports with it and man I got the itch really bad a couple weeks ago so it's nice to hear that because I feel the same I feel like th- like even though 
so I don't really care about New Year in January. I'm more of a spring equinox guy, you know, like that's that's to me is the natural New Year. But it is sort of a good time, you know, to start things here when with just use the energy that is there. And I feel like already, man, like my life has changed in two weeks. So you guys caught me at a good time. I'm in a good mood. Yeah. And and there was like a big astrological shift at the new year. And like, even if you do acknowledge the spring equinox is the real new year this year, Mars moved into Aries right on January 1st. And Aries is your 10th house, which is like your career in public life. So like from now until February 14th, when Mars is in Aries, you do have the chance to like work and use your willpower towards your 10th house stuff, which is your career and your public uh, persona. Cool, man. Yeah. Well, that makes sense because I, I just got sort of like a promotion and a, a raise at my day job. So it coincided with that time period. So yeah, we're spot on, man. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on our podcast today. It was really great talking to you um, about your own experiences. And it's so wonderful to talk to a fellow podcaster since we're still newbies in the podcasting world. So this has been a really fun experience for us. Absolutely. Me too, man. I actually hate being on the other side of these interviews, but you guys made me feel really welcome and comfortable. So you're doing something right because I don't always feel that way. But, uh, you know, good luck with the cosmic keys as you venture forward with it and i hope you guys find much success with it and don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions awesome well thanks a lot ryan and to our listeners we will see you next week 